Tell us your Beatles story. What, what's the truth behind that? In what way? Misery. Oh, that would that would that, that was done because we were on the coach together. I mean, the, the boys, in, in, when you get on the coach, if you're doing well, in those days the tours were sixty for three days, you know, over six months. Can we establish this is the the tour? The tours with the Beatles, or the, oh, well, the but pop tour. Shapiro's top of the bill. She's top of the bill, yeah, and um, and we went out, and they they had they, uh, they had the record coming out the first first few weeks of um, Love Me Do. And that got into the chart somewhere and all that. So they started giving him more time and all that. And Arthur Howes, who ran the tours, he said to me, uh, he used to come into the dressing room and say, look, the Beatles are getting a little bigger and all that. Can anybody lose a song? Well, I'm not, not, I'm not uh, one of the best person of being on stage very long. I like to do as little as possible. And uh, so I don't, I'm, not, I'm not really a showbiz person in that way. So I... Uh, I used to get, I started off singing five songs and I ended up singing two. Mm -hmm. And uh, Arthur Howard thought I was a son of God. He used to say to me, all those other artists won't let you, won't give me this, give me the time for the Beatles. Because they used to do about four songs like me. Yeah. And then they finish up doing this all, almost the whole of the second half. Though I took over the first part of the second half. Because Ellen. <laughs> Wouldn't go on. Before, wouldn't go on after them. She said they, she couldn't. They were just screaming and shouting. The kids and all that. So she then started going on um, in the first, uh, the second half. You know, so there was only two of them, and I closed. The, and I closed the uh, first half, and they changed it all around. And he said to me, um, I said, "Listen," he said, "You're going to have to go on before the Beatles and change your spot, and we'll give uh, earn your spot." Apart from the fact that I couldn't get out the theatre much earlier, it was, a, it was a bit of a pain. But I said, "Oh, yeah, okay, fine," because you know, he, he let me take out all these. Well, he, he thought I'd let him take them out, but actually, I didn't want to do them anyway. You know. And um, the reason that, that um, we had two girls singers, I can't remember the other one's name for the moment. Uh, the reason that uh, she didn't, she wanted to come off for the, <laughs> the second half as well because when she walked onto the stage, they just used to start. We want the Beatles. We, I mean, it was terrifying noise. It was like a, a, a tribe, you know, getting it, getting itself ready for war. And then he said to me, "Look, Ellen can't do this. Doesn't want to do this at this bit anyway. So she'll go and <laughs> laugh." But they used to start. We want the Beatles from about the time the doors opened. You know what I mean? When they when they were getting bigger and bigger. Yeah. And um, so. I went on to do deep my two songs, and, they, and the first time I went, I remember I went on, and they were all going saying, "We want the Beatles," and I just walked out on stage, and I stood in front of the mic like that, and they was all saying, "We want the Beatles really heavy," and it was getting close, and all that. so there was nothing. And I said, "I've got two songs to do." I said, "I don't want any of this. We want the Beatles stuff." I'm going to do these two songs, and then I'm going to bring the lads on. If you said anything like that, the lads or the boys, they'd get started. We want, you know what I mean? So you can listen, and I ain't going off until you've heard them. You know, I used to talk to them like that. You know. So, so it would be definitely silent, and I'd get clip it, cricket claps of the, like the, both the first songs. You know, what I, mean? I don't. Usually, I did up on the roof as the, the second song, and I did uh, listen to the rim of the falling rain or something first. And I used, to, well, I used to come off with all that. And I used to go, right, the Beatles. And then walk off, you know, they'd all come on and then they'd go potty again. But I was the only one that, because the boys didn't want it. They wanted to sing all the time. Everybody wants to be, they want to sing. Look, I mean, I've been singing with dance bands for years by then and I was really fed up with singing. I just wanted to get on it and get off, get me done and go home, you know what I mean? And, that, and that's the way I looked at it all. You recorded a Beatles song, uh, <coughs> Oh yeah, the reason I did that is they wrote it for Helen. Actually, wrote it for Helen. And uh, when when you when you're on tour, like, you, you you team up like footballers. They team up. I mean, I I, I was always with, with with John Lennon always, you know, because he was as mad as I was, and he didn't care about anything like I did, you know. And um, it, when they used to write, him and Paul used to go at the back of the bus or go in the seat behind us, because Paul used to always sit with Helen Shapiro either behind us. Or down the front by the driver, and they brought this song. I hadn't heard the song at all. When they, we were all getting on the coach and that, and 
she came over to, to we, I was talking with John and Paul, and, and she came over and she said, like, I think that song's a bit too manly for me and all that. So she said, no, no, we, we've written it for you. She said, well, I don't know, I, I, you know, I'm only 16 or 15, whatever she was. Like. So I said, what's, what's the song then? Let's have a listen. So Paul got down sat down the, and got his guitar and he played the song for me. I was doing the album. So I said to him, I was doing an album then, I said to him, uh, oh, I like that, I'll do that, that'll do that. I'm not with the song. It meant I wouldn't have to go around, around publishers and all that. You know, if I've got an extra song, you do 10 songs, you, you have to go around finding them first. Or most of them, you can ask them to bring stuff to you if they think it's good for you. I mean, Wally would do that. But sometimes you'd find your own. I thought, oh, that would be nice. And it did me good because it was the very first song anybody ever recorded of a Beatles song, which was, uh, which is like, you know, I think I was on Triple Pursuit or something in that sort of thing. It was just quite nice, I think. Um, but I, it, I, must, I must admit, it sold about... More people have spoken about it than bought it, I can assure you. I mean, everybody says, oh, you're the first guy to do a Beatles song and all that, and it sold about 7,000 records, I think. Which in those days, to have hits, you know, you'd, you'd have to have 100,000, you know what I mean? And it was, it was useful. Everybody I know now who sees me has got it. It's like everybody was at the Randolph Turpin fight and everybody was at the World Cup and all that kind of stuff. Did you ever tell the Beatles that you reckoned they weren't good songwriters? No. Has anybody said that? No. I always thought they were good songwriters. I didn't think that they, I, they weren't my kind of song. But now they're, my, they're more my kind of song. Now I've gone back to jazz. I, 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 I do, you know, P.S. I Love You and I like Eight Days a Week and, and a few songs I do them, but I do them in a sort of jazz fashion and all that. And I think any song you, cha you can change into any, any, any type of music is a great song. And I, know, I always thought they were hell of a writer, but I just didn't think that they weren't. They, I mean, they had, when, when I was thinking like that, they hadn't written songs like Long, Dark, Long Rinding Road. And, you know, I mean, I do all those kind of stuff in, in my jazz act and everything. But uh, if anybody ever said I did that, they're liars.